That's it, the pullback is never coming, and of course, now that I've said that out loud, it'll probably happen tomorrow. On a realistic note, longs are pushing their luck up here with just incremental higher highs and bearish market internals. It's really ripe for a liquidation breakout there, and we'll dive into that in today's episode of the Midweek Market Update. As always, check out the links listed down below in the description, hit the thumbs up button, and subscribe if you've not already done so, and stay tuned until the end of today's show. I've got three additional trade ideas to share with you that you won't want to miss. With that said, let's jump right into the charts. So starting on the SPY daily time frame chart, from a trend perspective, we certainly just have a neutral, maybe slightly more bullish than bearish trend on our hands. The reason we're still neutral is because we're coming from a lower low, and ultimately we've only just produced an equal high. You could make the argument that this was a soft lower high on the daily time frame chart, and from here to here you definitely do have a higher high, but because we never actually flipped into an hourly uptrend here, I wouldn't have the most confidence in saying, yes, this is ultimately a new uptrend because this to this is a higher high. We, it really wasn't significant enough of a high set here to call that type of trend. So regardless, neutral with a slight bullish edge, obviously the momentum here is certainly up. And the strongest opportunity to cement a new daily uptrend, as we know, is some sort of daily higher low pullback. And it's very likely, given the location of the chart, that we could find a daily higher low anywhere up and over 421.25. And as we've been talking about on the weekly charts, that starts to look like an inverted head and shoulders, everybody's favorite pattern. And that really cements the monthly higher low thesis and the market may want to move more constructively up and over that neckline if it's retested and if we get a strong daily higher low in the first place. Now, let's not get it twisted. Nothing about this current price action is overly suggestive of bears trying to get active in this market. We really need an hourly trend reversal if there's going to be a stronger daily pullback. And the market's currently one time framing in the upward direction, simply meaning that every single daily bar is producing a higher low. And up until the Monday inside bar, every single daily bar was also producing a higher high. Now, the most interesting part about this week, the past three trading days, is that these higher highs have been extremely incremental. So any new money longs getting active in the market up here are not really being rewarded for the risk that they're taking, right? They're getting involved at the worst possible trade location and they're not seeing any follow through in the upward direction other than maybe, you know, 50 cents, one point. It's not really enough to justify hanging on to that position if we start to see a breakdown of a pretty key level, which I'm going to start talking about as 435.75. If we take that out, I believe the market could see an hourly trend reversal and you could start to get a stronger daily pullback. Why is this such an interesting area of resistance? It's really twofold. Obviously, you can see that it's just an equal high from here to here, but let's remember why this was such an important place place in the first part, right? This was the retest of the weekly double top, right? It looked like this. It was the neckline that ushered in a lower low on the gap down underneath. So it's still that structure as well. It's a retest of that weekly double top neckline. It's also, if we throw on a volume profile here, and this still stood as we were looking at it on the first retest, right? It's a high volume node. So it's logical that you could pull back off of it from that perspective. And if we throw on the anchored view at band from the October lows of 2022, that is, let's just grab two years. So the purple band will anchor to the proper location. Not that it really matters. It's quite a distance away. But if you take a closer look here, we're pushing into the very top of the anchored view at band. So another reason to believe that, yeah, it might be logical for sellers who are trying to defend their positions from up here or up here to maybe step in and continue to try to look for continuation in the downward direction. What else is going on here? If we just throw back on the 50 SMA, it's worth pointing out uh, because there are going to be some divergences, some discrepancies across the indexes. We are above our 50 SMA. And as of right now, the 50 SMA is confluence with the low of Friday, the beginning of our first gap underneath us. So if we we start to pull back from this area and on the hourly chart, as we'll walk through in just a moment, if we do start to move underneath 435.75, a big area I'm watching on the chart is not only the first gap close here, but a big test of Thursday's low of day. Because it's my belief that over time, obviously the 200 SMA will slowly start to creep higher, but also that would provide confluence with your 38.2. That's, as we know from a Fibonacci perspective, the most healthy bull flag consolidation happening around that zone. So two things happen. We get a liquidation break from up here, longs with terrible location close out, providing some sell side pressure to the market. We close gap number one, but we support at the 38.2. Why is that so interesting? Because if we can't close the second gap, what does that tell you about the strength of the sellers? They're really not there. If we can hold up over that, if we can respect the 38.2, not only is it a daily higher low opportunity that doesn't even test the bottom here, but once again, from a bull flag perspective, 
looks pretty darn good, and there's no indication that stronger sellers are getting involved. So I'm really interested in roughly 426.50, the low of Thursday's session. With that said, let's take a look at some trend lines, and then we'll go on down to the hourly chart. We did break the secondary trend line, which is this one in here, and you can see that the primary is a little ways overhead. So if we're talking about upside targets, let's just quickly throw back on this drawing set over here. If we're talking about upside targets, the next major place to look for is the origin of this breakdown at 443.25, and that's just north of what you would get out of your trend line analysis, which is currently suggesting maybe into the end of this week, something like, oh, I don't know, 442 roughly. And if I put this back on, I know we're flipping through a lot of drawing sets. It's also the upper edge of this week's expected move close to 441. So this would kind of be the next overhead target if we see continuation. But as you'll see on the hourly right now, the story that the candles are telling, it's definitely bullish. And again, it's bullish until proven otherwise. I would just be very cautious about, again, getting involved with these longs at terrible trade locations. So let's talk about why, first and foremost, it's still incredibly bullish, right? There's no reason to jump the gun on the short until we have a lower high underneath 435. Obviously, we're in an hourly uptrend with the gaps proceeding. But on the Monday session, right, this is the inside day on Monday, it technically produces a higher low pullback on the hourly. We do not even test the Friday low of day. On Tuesday, you could think of this since it's an in inside bar, right? Tuesday breaks that range. And what you'll notice is that the pullback holds above. And on today's session, after breaking in the morning to set a higher high, it was a little bit of a fake out undoubtedly, but setting that higher high and then pulling back, you looked into the original range here. So let's just draw this fresh, right? Producing a look above and fail. And is there any acceptance underneath 435.75? The answer is just absolutely not. The bond auction kicks off at 101 this afternoon and boom, you're right back out of that range. So if we had stronger sellers involved in this market, you would have imagined a lower high back into range to produce a look above and fail. And the look above and fail always targets the bottom end of the range at 443 in this case, your daily 50 SMA, as well as the top of the gap from Friday's move higher. So why again is this still bullish? Because throughout that full duration of producing the look back into the range, technically you just got another hourly high or low. There's nothing bearish about that, right? As long as we're trading over 435.75, there's still an opportunity for an hourly higher low, right? You get lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. Now, where this does take a turn for your hourly trend reversal is if we start to get some sort of man ray pattern, right? There he is staring at you in the face. So you're still looking for, and that level hasn't really changed, 435.75. A lower high underneath changes the hourly trend, and then you can start to trade in the downward direction for a stronger and deeper even daily pullback. Let's take a look at some anchored view apps here. Uh, on the intraday from some key inflection points. And what you'll notice from this perspective is obviously we're above all of them, but note the confluence from, if I just back this off to 9.30, bear with me for just a moment, 9.30 there on the Friday bar of last week, you're getting perfect confluence at the low of today's session roughly in that 435.75 number. So that to me is the gatekeeper into the end of this week if the hourly trend is going to reverse. Once again, don't jump the gun here. It's not just a short because we're sitting at resistance. It's not just a short because we're sitting at the highest high, uh, or I should say equal high in the current sequence, it's only a short when the hourly trend reverses and you can start to aim for a daily pullback looking for some kind of higher low. Of course, the gap ranges speak for themselves. You have 433, 431 is the close. And then underneath, you're really looking for this 426.50, which as we talked about on the daily would be the strongest higher low to really cement some sort of bull flag consolidation. So to sum it up on the hourly, 435.75 is the gatekeeper into the end of this week. If we're above you can continue to be extremely cautious with new money longs. You're only entering if we see momentum and if you have a tight risk reward opportunity. If you do not have momentum, if you do not have a tight risk reward opportunity, doesn't matter that we're trading up here. It doesn't matter how bullish you feel about the chart. If there's no clear place to put a stop loss, you are getting involved at the worst possible trade location. Think about all these longs who are just exhausted, right? All it's going to take is another failed incremental higher high that comes back down, break 435.75. I think we're ripe for a liquidation break. Some more support supporting evidence that kind of, uh, you know, keys into this theory quite nicely is the market internals. Notice that from a volume flow perspective, outflows, outflows, outflows. We never had a single day of positive volume flows into the market. The advanced decline line is mostly under the zero line all week. Just this morning was the only interaction over the zero line. If you look at the cumulative builds out of the tick, remember that the tick does not care about where we are in relationship to the prior day's close. 
These are all telling the truth, right? On a tick by tick basis across the exchange, there's no bullish activity taking place, even though we've broken to some very incremental higher highs as we've been discussing. So again, I think that if anything, this would suggest that we're digesting here. There's a slight bearish edge. Uh, it's not overwhelming in the internals. It's not like we have a massive nasty outflow here. It's not like we're pegged down below and trend lower zone. It's not like the cumulative build is negative 5,000 three days in a row. But it definitely does not give me a warm and fuzzy feeling inside about trying to participate on new money longs in the upward direction here. Let's move along and take a look at our market profile for the ES. And this paints a similar story, but I do think it helps us understand where the sentiment will change, right? And it really aligns beautifully with what we know from the uh, inside bar range from Monday, right? We talked about how this was basically a two bar range. Look at where roughly, roughly, it's not precise, but look at where roughly the value area low of both Tuesday and today. Today's Wednesday session are. If we break down underneath, roughly speaking, 4385, we've talked about 4385 for a while now. If we're underneath 4385, 4390, this is a general zone. That's where I think your liquidation break is bound to happen because all of this turns into overhead supply, right? You'll notice that the point of controls were technically above that level. Point of control was above that level, but not up here at the highest high of today's session. Right, so underneath that zone, once again, one last time here, 4390, 4385, if you start taking that out, it's kind of a, a decent indication that this will turn into overhead supply selling pressure for the market, and we can look for the bottom of the range. We know what that number is on our SPY, but on our uh, ES futures, I would be looking at this honestly as the precursor to the gap, right? And that's going to be your poor low from the Monday session to give you the number that's at 4365. Underneath 4365, we can look for that gap to start to close. Not because, you know, it, the gap needs to close, but because poor structure here, it's literally a poor low, would open the door for lower prices. And there's really not much in terms of volume. If I just extend this to the left, you'll notice that there's no volume commitment at the lows of Friday's session. All the volume commitment is much higher. So breaking down under that, again, really opens the door for that gap close underneath in the ES futures. To give you the numbers one last time, I'm sure you're sick of it, 43.90 as the top over here breaking down underneath. You're going to look for your poor low here at 43.65. Let's do the same exact thing over on the NASDAQ 100. Of course, QQQ here, you will note from a trend perspective, we have the lower low and we are sitting at an equal high. We also had a soft lower high here. Once again, that just means not flipping into an hourly uptrend to achieve that level. So I wouldn't really look at this as a firm daily uptrend yet. There's a decent shot for a higher low pullback. Obviously, this has been a full V-shaped recovery, 100% retracement of the most recent leg lower. From a weekly perspective, you're lying in the sand for a higher low wants to be above 352, but just like the S&P, the ideal place from a Fibonacci perspective coming from the low of the move up to the tippity top of where we're at currently, it's more so in alignment with the lows of Thursday session and the lower edge of this week's expected move closer towards 360.50, right? Uh, if we just make a couple of notes, obviously over our daily 50 SMA, pulling back to close this first gap would put us in confluence with that level. There's an opportunity there for a gap fill reversal. And once again, not closing this gap underneath would be a bullish indication because the sellers have failed to repair thin structure, right? If we're thinking about what's going on from a resistance perspective, we're at the equal high, but notice we never actually closed. If I just scrunch this up, right? So this was the breakdown of this as a daily double top, which kicked off the move lower. We didn't really have a weekly double top. So still using the same inflection point here on the daily, we never actually closed firmly over that neckline, right? And what you'll notice here is a much stronger breakout on the Tuesday session from the NASDAQ side of the market. Now, on today's session, we definitely did find ourselves a very, very incremental higher high. The story is still the same with our lows, one time framing in the upward direction. Every single bar produces a higher low. So if longs are going to get exhausted, it's not so much about, uh, you know, this intermediate level at 372, but I do think much more so about 370 flat here on the QQQ. If, if that gets broken, violated to the downside, that's where I think your daily pullback starts to unfold from. If you take out our high volume node, we're just going to go through the same steps as the S&P, what you'll notice is that we've technically closed above, right? If we just do this again, we've closed above the high volume node, a little bit more bullish than the S&P. And once again, that's due to the strength of Tuesday's breakout on a relative basis. If we come in with our anchored view apps from the October bottom of 2022, again, we'll just grab that so it's the proper anchor. 
Uh, what you'll notice here is that we're outside of the anchored view app band in the upward direction. Definitely more bullish from that perspective. And once again, if we start to get a pullback, wouldn't be unreasonable that testing the top of the anchored view app band here at this level, 367.25, you could start to find some buyers. It's a little bit aggressive. It's not really enough of a daily, I shouldn't say enough, but it really isn't, it's not a very deep daily pullback. So I'm not sure I would have the most faith in that. Something that's really more firm and strong off of that 360.50 zone in here, closer to Thursday's low, feels more appropriate. Now, once again, does the market always give us what we want to see? Not usually. So it wouldn't it, just think about it like this. If we don't need to go down here, obviously it's much more of a bullish indication, right? Sellers just are not getting active. There's no uh, desire to close this gap. We're not even testing the lower edge of this week's expected move. From a trend line perspective, let's throw these on real quick. What you'll notice is that we've broken the trend channel, which was very, very clear in the NASDAQ for quite some time. And I'll stand by 10 out of 10 times coming from the bottom to the top of the channel. Not a great place from a risk reward perspective in the upward direction. Let's go back to a default set. Let's talk about some upper targets just in case the market does continue. Once again, you guys know darn well by now where my head's at from that point of view. Uh, if we do get straight up continuation, the overhead targets are limited. They're not as lofty as what we have over in the S&P. The S&P has some more room to run, uh, but this, because as you remember, this was a bit more aggressive out of the NQ uh, versus the ES or you know S&P versus NASDAQ market. Regardless, 376 and 377.75 are your next levels overhead. You're also much closer to the upper edge of this week's expected move over on the QQQ, whereas the S&P is not quite all the way there. So there's definitely some relative strength from that perspective. But again, thinking about trade location, thinking about what your risk reward is, it starts to become not a great look up here at the highest high. If we take a look at the hourly time frame chart, we can start to dive into the nuances of where the liquidation break potentially takes some uh, takes hold of the market, right? Clearly in an uptrend, just like the S&P lower left, upper right. Uh, and if we take an even closer look, we can just illustrate that yes, Tuesday's breakout was far more aggressive uh, by the nature of not producing an inside bar firstly on Monday. But if you just wanna use this, right? There's your 370 level that we were just talking about, gap fill reversal. Right, so we technically gap up on Tuesday, close the gap, find buyers, rally big time, and produce an end of day flag. Right on today's session, you would have thought that after making an incremental higher high, suckering in some longs on the potential for a breakout there, pulling back to break underneath the flag low should, in, in theory, right, should have disappointed lots of longs from this perspective. Once again, just like the S and P, I look at this breakthrough structure as a failed move from the sellers, and the fact that we've closed back in this range does strike me as a more bullish than bearish data point. So once again, there's nothing inherently bearish about the chart in front of us. However, from a risk reward location perspective, it still does not feel good looking for new money longs. If we are going to look for new money longs, you guys know the name of the game. It's just basically positioning as close as possible to here, putting a stop right there and making sure that you know exactly where your exit is and that you have some sort of positive expectancy from your ratio here. If this is going to turn into the man ray pattern, just like our S&P, there's your right, or excuse me, left shoulder, there's your double top. You could probably firstly get active underneath the double top neckline. But for me, because the hourly trend is so bullish, because this is clearly exhibiting relative strength to the S&P, I would prefer to see the hourly trend reversal produce a lower high under 370 if we're going to pull back in the first place. Once again, I want to underscore that there's nothing screaming short about this market right now. The only thing it's screaming is just be incredibly cautious about new money longs. If we take a look at market internals for the NASDAQ side of the market, what you'll notice is that we have outflows, but inflows on Tuesday, which mind you, Tuesday is the day where we actually saw some upward lift. We do see the advanced decline line weak throughout the week. Uh, the only time on Tuesday is where we're tangled around the zero line, not anything impressive in the upward direction. And the same thing really holds true for the cumulative tick. We are getting bearish reads on Monday and Wednesday, Tuesday, really more so flat than anything else. So do you want to trust that Tuesday rally? To me, I'm still skeptical of it. It's not like we saw a blockbuster read from a volume perspective. We're nowhere near trend higher zone. And the cumulative build, which once again doesn't lie in comparison to the prior day's close, it's flat. So not really thrilled about chasing new money longs from an internals posture perspective. If we take a look at the market profile, what we'll see here, and in my eyes is a huge tell, is the deficiency at the Tuesday high of day, a big poor high out of the NQ futures. We break that to repair it on today's session. There's decent excess at the lows. But again, what didn't happen 
happened today. The sellers did not take advantage of, this would have been the equivalent, right, of your bull flag consolidation. Look at what we have underneath from a market profile perspective. It's single prints. We look into the single prints. There is no acceleration to the low of that day to close the single prints. And if you're not familiar with singles, just think of it from the perspective of, you know, look at the volume illustration. There's no volume there. There's no value there, right? It's a very emotional drive in the upward direction. So in theory, there's not a lot of positions to defend in that area. So as we move into it, this once again illustrates the failure from the sellers, but it does give us a very clear picture of where to get involved if the market's going to start selling, right? You'll notice that you get a mechanical level here across your value area low and value area low from today's session. The point of control on the bar over bar count for our NQ futures is also lower. So I'd be most interested in 15,335. If we can break down through that level, it opens up the door once again for an attempt through single prints. You do have to contend with this little overlap here but ultimately the singles really, truly, right? You get double singles here in F period. The B and A overlap is not really much to write home about, especially looking at the volume print. So I would be looking at this breakdown underneath today's low, or excuse me, the singles, what am I saying? 15,305, underneath that, you can start to walk through some of this structure again. And then what do we know? Is that your stronger uh, lower high to kick off a firm trend reversal. So this, for instance, this is a trade. And then your stronger breakdown is a lower high back down underneath. If you do something across here, something right around, let's go with 15,250. Right? If you're underneath 15,250 with a lower high, that starts to represent, as we know, there's the man ray. Right? So that is the NQ futures. And lastly, for the broad market, we have IWM Russell 2000 and the small caps, which are clearly exhibiting relative weakness. It's been down this entire week. It is not one time framing in the upward direction. It's actually one time framing in the downward direction, making consecutive lower highs every single bar in a row for now three bars, if you don't want to count the original bar, which kicks it off. What you'll also notice here, and the reason I emphasize the 50 SMA on these spiders, is that we never actually recaptured the daily 50 on the IWM, and instead it's clearly turned into a rejection point. Now we are at a very interesting place of potential support here around 169. If this is going to hang on to everybody's favorite pattern, the inverted head and shoulders, the right shoulder needs to form at 169. Could you technically slip it a little bit? Yeah, but then you really start to deal with a breakdown back through key weekly structure. And that definitely would be more of a bearish indication than a bullish one. Clearly here, we are through the lower bound of this week's expected move. That does strike me as being bearish. But from a counter trend perspective, maybe the IWM could cool off just a little bit here and hang on to 169 into the end of this week. And then we'll reevaluate as we head into next week. If we think about the gaps that are in play from the thin structure last week, the IWM has also already closed its Friday gap up, right? And it's closed the gap and not found any kind of indication for a gap fill reversal. To me, if anything, you're starting to get buyers potentially stepping up off of 169, much less of an indication that, hey, it's a perfect and clean gap fill reversal area. We've also closed underneath the Fibonacci that we've been using on every other chart is from the low up to the most recent high. We've closed underneath the 38.2. Again, none of this should really come as a surprise seeing the relative weakness out of small caps here, but what do we know about small caps? They've really acted as the canary in the coal mine, especially as this breakdown was taking place over here. So if this is exhibiting weakness, if the market internals for the S&P and the NASDAQ are both also weak, do you have the most confidence fishing for new money longs at the worst possible trade location in an overall trend? I think the answer starts to become quite clear, or at least I know how I'm going to position uh, around those recent highs. If we take a look at the hourly time frame chart, again, another huge discrepancy is that we're already in an hourly downtrend with a lower high as well as lows, lower lows, and lower lows. Now, 169 is that important daily area of support, but ask yourself the question, is there anything about this price activity here that is suggestive at all on the hourly of buyers aggressively stepping up? Not really. It's just barefoot flag consolidation, again, underneath the lower bound of this week's expected move. And if you do draw out the gap close area, most of the consolidation is actually underneath the gap close. It's just the fact that the daily lower wick is produced by the small uptick into the close here. There's nothing really bullish about the IWM whatsoever as it's trying to resolve that 169. If you take a look at your anchored view apps from an intraday perspective here, what you'll notice, and you know, we could back this thing off as well. It doesn't really matter at this point, but you're underneath your anchored view apps, whereas in every other broad market index, 
index, you're above your key anchored view apps, right? So under here, uh, rejecting this in the consolidation, the only saving grace is that your lowest low anchored view app might provide some sort of confluence around 169. But even at that, the price action itself is really not suggestive of anything impressive taking place here. So I'm very skeptical based on the IWM's price action so far. If this is going to see a stronger reversal, what would you need to see? It's really got to be a move up and over 170.25, almost the lower bound of this week's expected move, just looking to squeeze out any of the shorts who are potentially uh, overly aggressive at the lower bound of the expected move and also late to the party here. It would be an indication that maybe 169 is going to hold on the daily, but if we just back out to the daily, there's nothing going on here uh, that is overly indicative of, hey, this is as strong or stronger than the other indexes that we look at, right? If we understand the overall weekly trend sequence, we're, you know, this is this is past the point, right? This is really not uh, at all remotely close to the relative strength. In fact, it's just relative weakness to the broad market as a whole. I think that's quite clear. We will throw on a couple of daily studies just to be consistent. Again, here are your anchored view apps from the October bottom. We're not going to adjust to the two-year. You get the illustration. We're underneath the cluster, the main cluster of the anchored view app band. If we take a closer look, the only saving graces are that we get an anchored view app from over here, basically the low of this move, potential support there at 169. This one anchored from the high here, potential support here. And as we know, from the intraday perspective, you're also getting potential support here from the very low uh, at 169 as well. So 169, the level is as crystal clear as it can be as a big line in the sand for your small caps from a volume uh, profile perspective. Not much to write home about over here. We know that we are basically rejecting the overhead high volume node. It's been that way on the weekly for quite some time uh, as of right now. Let's take a brief glance at the market internals for the Russell side of the market. Big outflows on the Monday session. Note, and remember, none of the other uh, exchange level reads got to the substantial mark. This one did in small caps. We were pretty close out of the S&P and the NASDAQ, but small caps, they did the deed. If we take a look at the advanced decline line, all days are under the zero line. Not even a little bit of price acceptance today over the zero line like the S&P. If you take a look at the cumulative builds over on the Russell side, again, these do not lie and they are clearly moving in the downward direction. Nobody at the exchange level is really interested uh, in small caps at this point in time. That kind of proves that if we just go back to the daily, right, this was nothing more than short squeeze out of small caps. And we're seeing liquidation break back in the downward direction as confirmed by something like your market profile for the Russell futures. These single prints in Monday and these single prints on today's session Tuesday indicate complete closure of any longs trying to capture the upside. It's just, oof, get me away from this. It's very emotional response, right? That's basically what single prints represent. The emotional response is very clear. The consolidation is on the lows. Point of control value area migrates lower. Same thing on today's session. Clear value point of control at the very bottom of today's range. It does mean that, once again, could you see a very short-term squeeze in the upward direction? Sure, to close these singles, but it's not really offering anything constructive in the upward direction. So overall, taking the full account of the broad market at this point in time, I think that small caps can primarily act as sort of one of those indications, something under the hood that would keep you skeptical about big new money longs in this market. In the interest of time for today's session, we are going to include all the supporting evidence charts over on Twitter, X, the old bird app. So if you want to look at risk appetite charts, if you want to look at the sector ratios, if you want to look at all the good stuff we normally cover, I'm going to post it in photo format over on X. You can follow us at the handle on your screen now. With that said, I appreciate everybody tuning into the show. We will be live tomorrow morning at 8.15 to kick off the day. It's Eastern time. Hope to see you up here in the penthouse. If you enjoyed the video, learned anything new, let me know down below in the comment section. And with that said, I wish you a green trading week.